All right, so when you guys are seeing this, it is 2018. I remember when that year used to sound so futuristic and now we're almost at 2020. I think 2017 was a pretty intense year for a lot of people. Hope that we can all come together in 2018 and you know move forward in the right direction here the best that we can. We're just talking about makeup today, so I'm gonna keep it at that. <laughs> just wanted to thank you guys for being a huge part of 2017 for me and being with me through the last six years, which is crazy. I've almost been on YouTube for seven years now. I actually have a whole video on this look. It's a New Year's Eve makeup look, so I'll link that in the eye over here and down below in the description box. But we're gonna be talking about the best products of 2017. These are kind of my most reached for, most used products. They're not products that necessarily came out. Okay, my hair is stuck in my armpit. They're not products that necessarily came out this year. They're just ones that I found myself using most often this year. You guys have heard me talk about all these at some point because they really are products that have stood out, that I continuously reach for, and that I love and 100 10% recommend to you guys. So I did this exact video last year, so if you wanna see what my favorites were then, I'm not mentioning any repeat products. It just so happens that I actually have almost the exact amount of high-end and drugstore products in this video. It's pretty half-half. I have about 24 products here, so I'm gonna try and power through this or else we're gonna be sitting here for two hours. If you're excited for this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Everything I'm talking about will be linked down below in the description box. So all of my products are in a Marshalls bag right now. And I'm just gonna dig in. I'm not going in any order right now. I'm just gonna pull stuff out. So here we go. Maybelline Fit Me Loose Powder in 05. This is a bomb if you have oily skin for setting the Milk Makeup Blur Liquid, which is also a 2017 favorite. This foundation with this powder, I did a whole video showing you this routine. It's a makeup for photography video. This combo is bomb. Let me know if you've tried this combo down below. I love this foundation. Talked about it 50,000 times. Great coverage. You can search the Taylor in the name of any product if you want to see me talk more in depth about it. This loose powder actually has some coverage and pigment to it, which is what I love about it. Any kind of translucent powders just don't sit the best on my skin. So I like this one has some color to it. it. Gives you such a beautiful, flawless, smooth kind of finish. Another powder that I've been using for years now, but especially in the last year, is the Laura Geller Balance and Brighten Powder. This is in the shade porcelain and I use this now still when I have dry skin just on my cheek area to set my foundation so that when I blend powder products on top like bronzer and highlight and everything they just glide over smoothly but this powder I loved when I set my entire face because it gives you this subtle glow the glow isn't as intense as like the A Cosmetic Celebration Foundation Illumination doesn't look like you're wearing a heavy powder or anything and I just love the finish shade everything of this powder I feel like this whole year was a blur so I can't quite remember what products released when but I'm pretty sure the Steel of Magnificent Metals launched this year right? I think it was this year. If so, I feel like this was one of the best launches of the year. The thing I love about this is that there's been liquid glitter kind of formulas out before, but not ones that are so jam-packed with glitter like the Steel of Magnificent Metals. My favorite shade is Diamond Dust. It kind of shifts to whatever color is underneath it. So if you put it on top of a pink shadow, it looks a little bit more pink and like rose gold. If you put it on a silver, it looks more silver. I don't get the glitter fallout since it is like a liquid glitter. I mean, I'm sure you've all seen this at some point, but just put it right on top as like a last step. I wouldn't really blend shadows on top of this afterwards. Use this as your last eyeshadow step. It actually kind of matches my nail polish right now. If you are into glitter and you didn't pick this up this year, get this. It is worth it. So this product launched in the last few months. This is the Hourglass Ambient Strobe Light Palette. Looks like this on the inside. You get three shades. I've used this in a ton of videos at this point. It gives you that intense strobe it really is like a strobe highlight but you don't get glitter you don't get texture it just gives you that bang intense highlight without emphasizing texture without doing gross things on your face when i wear this i actually just mix all three shades beautiful as an inner corner highlight as well this is nothing like the previous hourglass highlighters this is the best one hands down in my opinion i have a few different nude lipsticks in here and you guys can probably guess all of them but this is the l'oreal infallible paints matte liquid lipstick. So bomb. I love the shade of this. This is just a very wearable nude lipstick on my skin tone. After trying the infallible, I can't remember what it was called, but it was more like the wet, didn't really dry it down. It was like the wet sticky kind of formula. I was really turned off by these, but I'm really glad I tried this because the formula is totally different. This one is like just a liquid lipstick, a matte liquid lipstick that dries down. Beautiful nude shade if you're around my skin tone. Speaking of nudes, here's another one that I've worn a shit ton. This is the Sephora Lip, why can't I speak right now? Lip stain, cream lip stain in the shade 32. This one is much lighter than the L'Oreal one. I like to layer this on other things or I'll wear it by itself, but it does give you that kind of dead nude look, which sometimes I'm really into. Positions 
formula butter blushes this was such a great release this year the formula of these are spot on they blend out easily they have just the right amount of color in my opinion then you just get that really pretty kind of flawless flush i haven't found a shade that i didn't like but these two shades are rosy pink and plum rose i wear both of these this one gives you that really pretty kind of pink flush this one definitely looks more natural smell like coconut slash sunscreen my most worn lashes of the year were by pure cosmetics i love the pure lashes the bands are on the thicker side so if you're someone who likes the really thin ardell kind of band you won't like these these are more like the eyelore lash bands but these last so many friggin uses i literally wear each pair of these about 15 times i just kind of wear them till they totally die or they have like too many colors of eyeshadow on the band but my favorite styles are jet setter i'll try and find pictures wearing each one and include it on here these ones give you that really pretty separated doll like kind of eye which i'm a big fan of trend setter is my other favorite one which i don't have a pair of right now because i've gone through all of them and then diva are my other favorites you can just search again to see what each style looks like on my eye but i just love these lashes i find that they last forever they're cruelty free okay can i just say i still feel like this is one of the most underrated products out there right now this is the bh studio pro total coverage concealer i hope this catches on on youtube land because this is a bomb concealer it is beautiful it's full coverage it sets down it is right up there with tarte shape tape for me the only thing i don't like about this and the only reason why i don't reach for this every single day is because of the applicator by the way, I wear the shade 101. They did come out with lighter shades, but 101 is pretty good for me. I hate the applicator on this. I wish it was just a doe foot applicator. It would be so much more pleasant to apply. Some people might really like this applicator. For me, I just find it to be a little bit messy and it's just kind of pain in the ass. But the formula of this concealer, if you haven't tried it and you like full coverage concealers, you need to. This concealer is also literally a few bucks. It's like under five bucks. BH Cosmetics has some great stuff. This is one of their best products that they've ever come out with in my opinion. This primer, so many of you guys have snapped me saying that you tried this and you love it and that makes me really happy because I find it's really hard to find a good primer that actually does what it says. This is the Revlon Photo Ready Pore Reducing Primer. This one will not necessarily make your makeup last any longer. It's just really great for filling in your pores. When I do use this, you can visibly see it filling in your pores. I don't find that it breaks me out. I feel like this actually does something and if you've been looking for a pore reducing primer, try this. I have tried Benefit, Porefessional, a lot of the pore filling primers and I find that this drugstore one does the job. This is one of my favorite priming sprays for that dewy look. This is the Too Faced Hangover 3-in-1 RX. I mentioned this a shit ton lately. Silicone free, alcohol free, oil free. It's bomb. It smells like coconut. Gives you that dewy, really fresh face kind of look. Even if I'm not wearing makeup that day, I'll still spray this on if I'm going to go run errands or whatever because it just gives you a really pretty glow. I love using this over my makeup too. It makes your highlight pop. It really makes it stand out and gives it like a little extra something. It says you can use this to prime, set, or refresh. So literally use it for whatever you want. This I actually liked using when I was oily and now that I'm dry, so I feel like this will work across all skin types. This really helps to settle the powder with your liquid foundation and just make it look like your face, but it will give you a super dewy finish, so don't get it if you don't like that. So next up is a total splurge item. This is literally, if you just want to splurge because this highlighter is like in the $60 range, which is very pricey clearly, but this is the Burberry Fresh Glow Highlighter in Pink Pearl. It is so pretty, so pretty. Not only is the packaging beautiful, you get this design on here. I have a lot of videos wearing this if you wanna see what it looks like. Gives you a light pink kind of pearl highlight that just never looks bad. One that's actually pretty similar to it and gives you a similar effect is the one I'm wearing actually right now. And this is by JCAT, it's the You Glow Girl Bella Rose Highlighter. These are pretty similar. This one has been another favorite of the year. I only recommend this shade. In this formula, I don't recommend any of the other JCAT highlighters. I've tried the other shades and there's something different about the formula. They're a little bit more chalky and glittery. This one is beautiful. JCAT is now carried on Ulta, so if you like that light pink intense highlight look, you might like this. This one I was debating mentioning because it is definitely a more recent find, but I am in love with this thing. I haven't wanted to use a different blush since I got this. This is the Ciate Summer Love. I talked about this in my November Raves and Rejects. The formula of this is spot on, easy to blend out, gives you the most airbrushed kind of blush look. It's beautiful. I've already ordered a second shade. I haven't tried this one yet, but I got the shade In Too Deep, which looks like kind of a lavender 
color, which I don't really have a blush like this, so I'm excited to try this. I know I'm gonna end up getting every shade in this blush because it's just that good. It's definitely one of the more hard to mess up blush formulas, if you know what I mean. You don't really have to try. So when I was thinking about eyeshadow palettes that I used the most this year, only two popped into my head. The Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance Palette, which I actually included in last year's favorites, so that's how long that one has been a favorite. So I didn't want to talk about that one again. And the only other palette that really stuck out to me that I absolutely ended up loving is the Morphe Jaclyn Hill Palette. We all know what this one looks like. I've talked about this a lot, so I'm not going to go in depth about this, but there's something about the formula of these, especially the browns that just look amazing every single time. They don't blend away, they're super pigmented. The light champagne shades are beautiful as a face highlight and on the inner corner or just all over the lid. I do still wanna do a bridal makeup look. I've literally been talking about that for like two years. I do still wanna do it and I feel like the light champagne shades in here would be perfect for that. If you've been debating getting this one, I think it is worth it. It's a great palette. It's what I travel with every single time I travel. If I'm only bringing one eyeshadow palette, I'll just bring this because there are so many different looks you can do with this. Standout kind of contour slash bronzer. You can kind of use this for both. Shade for me this year was the Kevin Aquan Celestial Bronzing Veil Tropical Nights. Every time I hear Kevin Aquan now, I just think of Kylie cosmetics comparing herself to him lol if you have fair skin this light shade right here is perfection for a cool toned contour shade i love mixing all three of these if i want more of a bronzer look i'll go in with like the middle right here i just love that you get basically multiple shades in one it is pricey but i think it's worth it because i've reached for this a shit ton and it has a little bit of like a glow in it to the point where it just looks flattering it doesn't look shimmery i don't find but I don't really mind that. Like this, this blush is an illuminating blush. I like that look on my face. I don't find it to be, you know, overly shimmery or anything, but there it is right there. My go-to brow product since I tried this has been the Benefit Cabrow Gel. This is great. I like this better than the Anastasia Dip Brow. Really similar to the Anastasia Dip Brow. There's just something I like a little bit more about this one. And it does come with a brush up here. I never really use the brush, but if you were traveling or whatever, you could definitely use the brush. It's just a little bit too stiff. I kind of go back and forth between pencil and gel eyebrow products, just depending on what my brows are looking like. You guys know how I feel about brows. They're not my thing. I don't, I don't enjoy doing my brows. I kind of just do whatever's easiest in the moment and we'll get the job done. And this gets the job done. You know, so this foundation is one that I found during the last 15 days of foundation series. And it is beautiful. If you like medium coverage, dewy, and you want something that just looks really natural and plumping and beautiful, the Estee Lauder Double Wear Nude Water Fresh Makeup is, is that. Even when I had oily skin, it lasts surprisingly well on my skin. I would wear this way more often on its own if the shade was right. I have the lighter shade 1C1 Cool Bone, and it's a little bit dark, so I do have to mix this. And it just looks so smooth, so plumping, fresh. It really does look fresh. I wish they came out with more shades in this, but it's a really beautiful foundation. All right, we are down to the final two products, both of which are lipsticks, liquid lipsticks. This is the Wet n Wild Liquid Katsu in Nudie Patootie. I've talked about this five billion times. I just love this shade. It's a beautiful, light, cool toned shade. Again, similar to the 32 by Sephora. I would wear it with a lip liner. I do wear it sometimes without a lip liner or without layering on something, but it is pretty light. It's a very cool toned nude, so it can make you look a little bit dead. This is a few bucks from the drugstore. Totally dries down to a matte liquid lipstick. Not the most moisturizing. Definitely feels a little bit drying on the lips, but not to the point where I find it to be super uncomfortable to wear. And it's hard to find a drugstore lipstick that is this light, which I feel like is what's kind of special about this. The so last product is one that I mentioned in my top 10 red liquid lipsticks video, which I'll link in the eye and down below if you missed that. This is Smashbox Bang Bang. The always on liquid lipstick formula by Smashbox is beautiful. Such a great formula. Doesn't feel super drying on the lips. Comfortable to wear. Lasts amazing throughout the day. I love the applicator on here. It has like a little triangle pointed applicator that just makes it easy to get that line. The shade Bang Bang is a nice bright red, so flattering if you have fair skin. If you haven't tried the Always On Liquid Lipstick Formula, they are bomb. So obviously that wasn't all of my favorite makeup from the year. You can go back and watch the Raves and Rejects playlist if you wanna see my top products from each month. These were just kind of the ones when I was looking back and looking through my makeup collection and everything. These are the products that I felt like I used the most that really stood out. And I have a whole other video on all my favorite high coverage foundations and things like that. I'm gonna be trying to break down 
and do top foundation videos by like category. So those will be coming. Let me know down below what your favorite products of 2017 were because I am always on the lookout for new good products. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. I am jazzed for 2018. I feel like it's gonna be a good year. I hope you guys had a good 2017. Thanks again for being here with me for it. So I love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. Bye. Thank you.